Welcome. Behind this garage door lies a different world. This garage door has something in common with garage doors, with shed doors, with spare room doors, with loft hatches across the land. Behind it is a different world. A world of fun, laughter, learning, challenge, but most of all escapism. Behind this garage door is a model railway and I'd like to take you on a journey with me into it. Welcome to the Pringleton Model Railway. Okay, we're straight in here, so we're gonna go through the door and, whoa! Now, you know, I've done a little bit of tidying off the garage, but you know, it's not perfect. We've got like the summer stuff, the barbecue stuff, things to um, put on the fire basket, toys, endless amounts of stuff, the bins, the tools. Uh, we have some bottles that need recycling, but now let us cut straight to the chase here and take a look at Pringleton. So look, we are arriving at the main station just in time for the beautiful Class 33 to come flying through. And there's a story with that one in itself because that was a 10 pound model. We have the Class 90, uh, 91, the old Intercity 225 waiting there. And you know, there's a little bit of planning here. The 156 DMU has come through. And at the back, we can see the Class 33 and its rake of carriages heading into the tunnel out of Mount Pringleton. And if we wait just a few seconds again, the 156 is going to come out. Now, let's pull back just a little bit and have a look at the old, the overarching thing. So this is a fairly square double garage. Uh, it's a very exciting double roller door there. And the original plan uh, was that the layout was going to take up this whole wall at the back there, built on the storage bits down there, which were already in place when we moved in. And that is indeed the case. But that has also been supplemented with this whole um, yard type thing down the far side. So that gives a L-shaped arrangement. So let us have a little tour of everything now. So from the left hand side here, built up in the corner is the start of Mount Pringleton. And you know, I'm really, really, really pleased with that. And that is gonna be the subject of another episode of this show very shortly. So we've got a pretty straightforward double oval, but you know, certainly compared to what I had when I was a five-year-old and you know even a 15-year-old it is pretty darn big so we got a classic double track double oval and we can see around the back there as we look across Pringleton town itself the double track extends around the back down the front here we have got what in my mind is a pretty substantial station with one two, uh, three, four, five uh, platforms, sorry, three platforms and five places for uh, trains to be. Um, and we've also got, if we come down this side, you can see that there's like a passing loop down this side as well. So, you know, when I was like a five-year-old, I was you know, ecstatic about buying a point and having an extra siding. And here I've got, you know, like dozens of points. I know this is not huge compared to some, but certainly compared to what I had when I was a little lad, you know, this is a huge amount of space with really complicated track work um, and some really exciting stuff. And it's all DCC. So, you know, building this in the autumn of 2020 gave me the opportunity to, you know, to start from scratch. The station itself, uh, the platforms are all scratch built. There's plenty of cardboard Metcalf and super quick models and to be honest most of them are second hand or repurposed or knocked around we'll have a little walk across Pringleton right now I'm delighted with it it's um, you know nice it's not perfect but I think there's some real highlights my personal bits are the churchyard there these little houses um, the whole um, 
uh, town centre itself. Now, if we walk down the side here, and you can see where the yard comes off of the main line around the back here, we've got some uh, a sort of curved entrance into the whole yard and some pretty damn long uh, carriage and freight sidings here. Uh, four of those and then this sort of long passing loop uh, or run around type arrangement at the front here and again compared to what I had when I was like a five year old 45 odd years ago this is just a huge amount of space and length and um, you know I've not done it all myself my son you know has helped me with some of this and you know to be honest putting this in place was something we did together originally um, of course he's in his late teens now so his interest has waned but I reckon he will come back to it in years to come just like I did now now as we head towards the loco uh, yard we see some absolute gems in here so you've already seen the class 33 the uh, the 156 DMU and the class 91 in the sidings uh, are running around on the main line but we have this beautiful class 8 shunter there ready for uh, some action and in the shed itself a class 59 and a class 47. Now uh, you also get a hint that there's a little bit of lighting there and that is a piece of work which is in progress at the moment. So we've got these two um, beautiful diesel locos which you know, I, I generally set up for hauling freight trains. We've got the, the Class 8 which is one of the super detailed ones and I'm going to do like an episode on every loco frankly. We've got the Class 33, we've got the Class 91, the Class 156 and the only loco we haven't seen so far is this little beauty down here in another little sort of uh, carriage siding area which I've built which is this little 040 uh, southern steamer with uh, some of these um, small uh, wagons at, uh, sorry these small carriages at the back here so uh, what is the overall theme well it's a modern one um, it's a modern theme, um, you know, it's not perfect, I'm guessing sort of 90s, early 2000s, um, nowhere particular, but just a place to run some really modern-ish uh, equipment, uh, locos and uh, freight and so forth, without worrying too much about being perfect or anything like that. The rationale uh, about having a little steamer and a fairly old BR uh, blue loco in there is the heritage rail tours function there which is of course is very nice um, you can book yourself onto a little treat away on a, a class 33 diesel or indeed if you're really lucky a summer steam special here now as i said with all of the other locos we saw i'm going to do some specific episodes on each of the locos and indeed on some of all of the other little features so here we have it that is the overall view of Pringleton and you know even now after what uh, three years of this rolling around um, I am ecstatic to be in here you know I've completely forgotten about work I've completely forgotten about all the stresses of you know everything and I'm just looking at these trains running around makes me feel incredibly happy the one other thing I'm going to say right now is that uh, the control setup for this is Hornby Railmaster and E-Link. So somewhere down here we have uh, an E-Link uh, or a PC running E-Link. And so yes, it's completely DCC and underneath the track we've got a whole DCC bus and all sorts of track feeds and all of that good stuff. So as the class 156 streams through the station there, that will wrap up this little bit for now. And one final look of the class 33 and its carriages rolling into the tunnel there with the 156 coming past as well. So that is us for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, what is it people on YouTube say? Don't forget to like and subscribe. We will be back soon with another episode. I've got great plans for 
uh, episodes on the trains, on the build, on the landscape, pretty much everything. If there's something you'd like to see, just let me know in the comments. So until then, let's let the trains play a sound with some wonderful music. Take care and see you again soon. Thank you.